A wave of migrants continues to flow to our southern borders. Are they refugees? And are they legally eligible for asylum? Hi, welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell on so you can be the first to watch our new episodes every week. Now, there's a lot of confusion about two terms we've been hearing about a lot lately. Refugee and asylum seeker. Sometimes people use these words interchangeably when referring to the thousands of people trying to enter the United States, especially through our southern border. And although they're similar and interconnected, there are some differences in how each is granted. And it's important to understand that difference if you want to understand what's happening at the U.S. border. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, a refugee is someone who leaves their country for fear of persecution. And refugee status is given as a form of humanitarian protection. In the U.S., the law requires that the person be outside the U.S. when they make the request for refugee status. And they must show they're being persecuted due to race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or for belonging to a particular social group. Because of an ongoing civil war, Syria has the most refugees resettled around the world, almost 7 million. Once the refugee status is granted, the person is allowed to travel to the United States and is usually given some medical and financial assistance. Since they can't go back to their country because they fear for their life, they're allowed to stay and eventually become U.S. citizens. Last year, the U.S. took in more than 20,000 refugees. Most of them were from these countries. As for people who are seeking asylum, it's similar in that the person has the same requirements as a refugee. Fear of persecution due to religion, social group, political opinion, you get the drift. But unlike refugees, people seeking asylum need to request it inside the U.S. during the first year they're here. According to the original U.S. law, any person who is physically present in the United States or who arrives in the United States, whether or not at a designated port of arrival, may apply for asylum. So a lot of people would cross the border illegally and then apply for asylum if they were arrested, which they could legally do. However, last year, the Trump administration set a rule that asylum seekers needed to enter the country at a port of entry to be eligible for asylum. And some of those ports of entry are pretty crowded at the moment. For example, San Isidro, between the U.S. and Mexico, just south of San Diego. It's the biggest and busiest port of entry in the world. Every day, 90,000 people cross into the U.S. at San Isidro. If your paperwork is in order, it's a process that can take anywhere from half an hour to four hours. Kind of like the DMV. Now, add those who want to enter the U.S. for the first time and don't have their documents in order. Once again, kind of like the DMV. There's also a shortage of officers to process these requests. To clarify, I'm talking about the border now. The Customs and Border Protection Agency estimates they are short 4,000 officers nationwide. One solution is the Senate's proposed Securing America's Ports of Entry Act of 2019. It would fully staff America's airports, seaports, and land ports of entry by requiring U.S. Customs and Border Protection to hire no less than 600 additional officers a year until the agency's staffing needs are met. Basically, more people than ever want to cross into the United States and there isn't enough manpower to process them all. In previous decades, most of the migrants crossing the southern border were single men from Mexico. But now, we're seeing a lot of single people and families from Central America crossing through Mexico. They're coming up from places like Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Some are simply fleeing poverty, looking for a better life. Others are running away from gang violence and organized crime. And certainly, those are valid reasons to want to get the heck out of Dodge. However, under current U.S. immigration law, neither poverty nor gang violence are listed as qualifications for refugee status. That means most of these people are eventually turned away because they didn't have a credible fear of persecution. In 2008, just under 5,000 asylum applicants coming through the southern border claimed they had a credible fear of persecution. By 2018, that number had jumped to 100,000. That's why the Trump administration wanted to limit asylum seekers to people who crossed the border at a legal port of entry. But his move was challenged in federal court, twice. First, it was temporarily blocked. Then it was struck down by a judge for violating current immigration law, which means the law still says that people can apply for asylum 
regardless of where they entered the country. But even without the issue of who can apply for asylum, the U.S. takes in only 20,000 asylum seekers per year. And that includes all countries, not just Latin America. So in June this year, President Trump decided to enlist Mexico's help dealing with migrants coming up from Central America. And in exchange, he'll teach Mexico how to make the best taco bowls. He loves Hispanics. Anyway, Trump threatened to impose tariffs on Mexican goods unless Mexico agreed to let the migrants wait there while their cases are processed, which can take months or even years. And if Trump were to put tariffs on Mexico, avocado toast would get even more expensive. And that would, of course, lead to massive riots in the U.S., or at least in San Francisco. Fortunately, Mexico said yes to helping handle asylum seekers, and avocado lovers rejoiced. Mexico also agreed to send its own troops to the border with Guatemala to try to limit people trying to get in. Since the agreement, the number of asylum seekers waiting in Mexico has doubled to nearly 20,000. And it's having an impact. Mexico's immigration centers are overflowing, and border towns are complaining about the increase of people now stuck living there. Sounds familiar. Also, some of these Mexican border towns aren't really any safer than the countries people are escaping from. In addition, in mid-July, via executive order, the U.S. established a new asylum rule, the Safe Third Country Rule. This is how it would work. Let's say you want to come to the U.S. from Honduras or El Salvador on foot or by bus or by car. You have to go through Guatemala. The government argues that if you truly fear for your life, then you would want to stay in the first safe place that will take you. In this case, Guatemala. With the new rule, if that country denies asylum, then and only then could the person request it in the U.S. So, to get Guatemala on board, President Trump signed an agreement designating it a safe third country. So that's a very big thing. It's a very important signature. Never been done before. But opponents argue Guatemala isn't really safe. After all, it's part of what's called the Northern Triangle that also includes Honduras and El Salvador. Which, can I just say, this is not a triangle, people. It looks more like a large duck with a tiny beak. It's also rife with violence, poverty, and gangs, which is why people are fleeing from those countries in the first place. So, Guatemala being part of that duck is not exactly a top destination for refugees, which is part of the reason why a U.S. federal judge has blocked the new rule from taking effect. And it's yet another policy that Trump has tried to implement that has now ended up in U.S. courts. Then again, migrants from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador could be required to seek asylum in a worse place, like Baltimore, which has a higher murder rate than any of those three countries. Although, to be fair, the nice part of Baltimore has a Whole Foods, so it's not all bad. Plus, I hear they sell avocados from Mexico. Anyway, the other problem with the safe third country rule is that it comes via presidential executive order. But new immigration laws are supposed to be handled through Congress. The problem with that is that Congress is extremely bad at compromising on controversial issues especially when there's an election coming up. And there's always an election coming up. So, people are continuing to come to the border. There aren't enough officers and judges to process the cases. There's a growing bottleneck in Mexico. The Trump administration's attempts to restrict illegal immigration without Congress face court challenges, and Congress won't act. At least those delicious Mexican avocados are safe for now. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. So visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.